All right, let's bring back Professor Zhong Ling from CKGSB to talk more about China's aging population. So, uh, Professor Zhong, the relaxation of the one-child policy certainly has led to a rise in the 0 to 14-year-old cohort, but the birth rate is still low, although you say that could change. Uh, the increase in the cost of living from urbanization and a whole host of other factors could lead to a sense of financial insecurity for couples to start a family. So how are policymakers here in China further addressing this issue? I think the government has put in a lot of effort to boot birth rates, uh, the public education system, the maternity leave that's making it mandatory, and the subsidies for families with children are all contributing to this national task of encouraging childbirth. But you see, this, like one of the interviewees said in the uh, video step, that this is a systematic issue that we have to also combine these with some um, labor market policies that would not cause any discrimination against women with children or married without children, that we look forward to them to have children so that they may have limited uh, energy at work. So, And I noticed that most policy efforts are moving some of the burdens from the mothers to the government. But I want to personally want to point out that where are the fathers? This is a biological fact, and we have a cultural norm that mothers tend to spend more time and money on children than fathers do. So changing that trend will be harder than changing through economic policies. But when the government has exhausted the economic policy tools, it will eventually switch to social policies, such as gender equality moves and paternity leaves and et cetera, that will help the general population realize that the, both genders have to share the, this uh, responsibility towards their children. That will really encourage more women to have children. Hmm, interesting point. So increase the role of fathers in child rearing um, abilities and responsibilities. How do you see the advances, Professor Jerome, in technology in alleviating the challenges of China's aging population? Um, I came across an international monitor uh, fund report that it looks like there are four typical approaches that can mitigate the uh, negative impact of aging on labor productivity. Um, I'm going to talk about them in uh, an order that's from largest effect to smallest effect, okay? So the first is really to use uh, health policies and medical sciences advancements to, one is to do assisted reproductive technology to increase birth rate. So that's an interesting point. And the other is just health sciences to improve the health status of people in the middle age or in uh, just step into their 60s. So they can actively participate in the labor market. And um, as long as they are a wage earner, that's really relaxing the financial pressure on the social security system as fewer people solely rely on the pension system. Mm. And the second tool is a training for existing labor force. Uh, that's also helpful, but I'm not sure if that's really helpful for uh, people who are not familiar with internet or, or technology, um, you know, smart technologies. And uh, the fiscal reforms also play a role, uh, such as tax reduction. That's a smaller effect than e economists would expect. And it turns out that if you promote research and development in firms, that has some effect, but it's only significant in the public sector, but not in private firms. So yeah, those are the four typical uh, policy approaches to alleviate the challenges of China's aging problem. Yeah, but Professor Zhong, something else that China has done is raising the retirement age. Um, and when it comes to labor productivity, are there lessons then perhaps that China can draw on from more developed economies in terms of how to tackle an aging population? Um, so the relaxation of the retirement age has to be accompanied by the expansion of employment opportunity for those people in that age range, right? Uh, so I think that's uh, effective, but may need some other compensating policies that would help those people who should have retired but now uh, keep, are kept in the labor force because of the extension of the retirement age. Um, but there are other policies. Say, like many developed countries actually improved their labor quality and productivity through high quality immigration. Mm. So, China's growth certainly attracts many talented people. So, the demand for immigration is there. What's missing is the supply of, say, passports. China just needs to relax its policy to embrace these new talents to improve the labor productivity. Mm. All right, all fantastic points. And like you say, it's not just about one policy, it's many policies working together to address China's low birth rate.
uh, and aging population challenges. Many thanks for your thoughts on all of this. Professor Zhongling from CKGSB.